Hey guys, Cloud8 back with you, taking our third look at Ultimate General Gettysburg. Uh, still on the first day of battle, and if you remember, if you joined us for the second part, um, Confederate uh, Scales Brigade had made a charge uh, pressing Baxter up, uh, trying, to, trying to move them back off of Oaks Ridge. It's changed hands twice now, uh, so there's a, a pretty, pretty uh, hefty fight going on for that, that victory location. Uh, unfortunately for Scales, he uh, looks like, if I remember correctly, lost about 100 men and was uh, unable to dislodge Baxter uh, with Bucktail's brigade and support as well. Um, again, uh, Oak Ridge is, is kind of contested. We've got the only guys really up there uh, for now. The battle's been delayed because of all these victory points being contested, but uh, already afternoon, and uh, the Confederates are kind of running out of time. Uh, not a whole lot of action going on down in the south, really. Uh, Iron Brigade hasn't been pressed uh, very heavily, uh, and we're still confidently holding Seminary Ridge, uh, Biddle's Brigade in reserve, um, and then some artillery back here, which uh, really uh, I think I probably need to move up into the fight. Uh, so I'll do that, and uh, that was a terrible circle. Uh, we'll take these guys and kind of try to retake um, Oak Ridge. This is uh, Buford's brigade, which we was all we started with, if you remember. They've taken some pretty heavy casualties. I think you can even see if we click uh, Buford, uh, if I deselect and just click Buford, yeah, they took 32% losses. Uh, but they did hold, and as you can see, the first corps on the field and uh, confidently engaging uh, the Confederate forces at this time. And Kalos Battery, who actually belongs to Buford, <laughs> took like 50% losses, I think. But they're still in the fight. They're still hanging in there and uh, providing support. So that's that's good. We'll pre-position Biddle, basically, in case... Uh, I don't know who that is. Pettigrew, maybe, with his 2,300-man uh, brigade. That's a, that's a pretty big brigade. Generally, Confederate brigades were larger than... Uh, than their Union counterparts, uh, particularly um, because uh, the Union, uh, if I remember correctly, would basically just let a, a brigade be like combat fatigued and and whittled down until it was decommissioned, whereas the Confederates would continuously reinforce as they were able. Um, so that kind of yeah, that ends up, as the war goes on now, in the middle of 1863, kind of in the middle of the war, we see um, some Union brigades with, with fewer troops than their Confederate counterparts. So. Nonetheless, we've got pretty strong artillery battery up here. Uh, should be able to deal with any... Uh, we've retaken uh, Oak Ridge now. Pretty happy with that. Uh, we'll just halt these guys here. Uh, no real sense in doing anything other than just taking that high ground back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see Davis being driven off with heavy casualties there. The artillery really, the Union artillery really does a number. Um, I don't know, long range, uh, I believe they're supposed to have an advantage. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, but the difference here being that the Confederate artillery is not placed close enough to use like uh, effective canister, even really shell shot on the, the Union troops, so they're just using solid shot, which isn't is effective, but not nearly as effective as uh, some of our shell and canister from Stevens and Hall batteries. Um, and again, I'm I'm pretty much okay being our numbers being relatively equal. I'm I'm okay with a uh, if you want to call it a war of attrition. Uh, like if you if if the AI wants to try to push me off these hills on the high ground, you know, bring it on because uh, they just the Confederates it, in a strategic sense, the long term sense, they simply don't have the numbers to fight this kind of a fight. Now tactically, they might be able to get away with it. Like if he, if he had uh, turned my flank and taken this, then you know those casualties might have been justified, but. In the long term, strategic sense, if I'm thinking, you know, like General Meade, like the Union cause in general, these casualties the Confederates are taking here are just not acceptable, uh, especially since they haven't turned our flank and we're still holding strong. 
so. Maybe you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys disagree with me on that one or not. Again, uh, I look forward to, uh, to hearing and, and participating in some, some discussion on this, this kind of stuff, if that's what you guys want to do. If you want to talk more about the game, that's cool too. Um, but either way, like, uh, you know, the, the history behind the game, like, hey, the game's fun, don't get me wrong, I like playing games, it's fun. But I like to learn from them too. And, uh, you know, in today's world where people kind of are, are tough on video games, you know, they, they say that it causes violence and this and that, and, and you know, maybe there's some some truth behind some of that, but but look look at the, the things that can be learned with a, just a little bit of a, a video game with some excitement and, and action in it. And yes, there's death, but that was part of the history. And, and to forget that and not remember it and honor it, I think would be a mistake. And if, and if it takes a video game to teach kids uh, some stuff about history or, or the younger generation, whatever you want to call it, yeah, I think that's worth it in the long run. But, you know, that's just me on my little soapbox about gaming, so... Back to the battle, it looks like the Confederates are really in disarray. We've done a, a number on them. Um, just not not able to, to push us off this ridge once we get up there. Um, we outnumber them at this point now, too. Their artillery, they've got a good position with that artillery. I, I feel like I have not done as well with positioning my artillery, but... Um, it, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, too. So, I think we'll take Caliph back and replace him with uh, Reynolds. At this point, I don't even know if they'll make it there before much the end of the battle, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Oh man, Pettigrew's <laughs> retreating through a murderous amount of fire. You can see uh, the third corps leader. Uh, I don't recall who that is for the Confederates. I don't know that I can click on him and find out, but um, he's trying to rally the the troops. Uh, Perrin and Brockenbro are going to try to press. Maybe the Iron Brigade. Uh, maybe we can shift Biddle back over here just in case. Uh, sir, it seems that the battle's about to end. Uh, and, of course, there it is. Um, so, I know the music's kind of loud, and I hope you guys can hear over the top of it. Um, so, you can see the statistics page at the end of the battle. Um, the only thing the Confederates ended up keeping was Hare's Ridge. We were able to keep all the... There's the end of the song there. We were... Uh, the battle started at 9.30 and ended just, just after 1 in the afternoon on the 1st of July. <laughs> Epic victory. Uh, so that's that's good. <laughs> we only lost less than 1,900 men. Um, of course, when you think about it, in just a few hours of fighting, to to lose 1,800 men is, is pretty brutal. Um, pretty heavy fighting, obviously. But, you know, that's the Civil War for you. It's a, it's a learning point, too. And the Confederates, like we were talking about towards the end of, end, uh, of the battle there, uh, almost 6,000 troops lost, and they just... Tactically, they can't afford it, and strategically, they certainly cannot afford to take losses like that. So this truly was... Buford and the First Corps under Reynolds really did a number uh, in this battle. So so that's uh, solid. Now we can kind of see what the whole dynamic campaign that uh, Darth has set up in his game is, is really about. Um... And then at the, once the end of the first day happens, I think maybe I'll put in like a little historical recap and kind of say like, hey, here's what happened in real life, here's what happened in the game. Um, so now here's the dynamic part, which is is really cool. So basically, it's saying, hey, what's what's your strategy going to be now? And you can you can kind of pick and see what's going to happen. So what it says, general, what do you want to do? We can defend the ridges north of Gettysburg at all costs. So those are the ridges we held, right? Here's Seminary Ridge, Oak Ridge, and Oak Hill. But <clears throat> tactically, what is that going to do for us? We've got the Third Corps, which was pressing us pretty hard, although they took heavy losses. Uh, but you've also got, I think that says the Second Corps, it's hard to read, uh, coming in from the northeast. So this is going to leave us open to being outflanked, and I certainly don't like that, uh, tactically or strategically. Um, 
I don't know why I can't turn the music off here, but I can't. Uh, withdraw to Seminary Ridge and reinforce Cemetery Hill. So now you can see the map has shifted. Here's a the perspective it shifts a little bit. So we, we pull back to the southeast of town onto Cemetery Hill. Um, and we kind of still defend Seminary Ridge. Uh, or we can ignore Oak Hill and defend the uh, southern ridges here. So that's kind of your intermediate. This is don't give up anything, give up most of it, and give up some of it. So I'm going to say let's ignore Oak Hill because we couldn't, we barely were able to take it and keep it last time. And uh, what we'll do is um, pull back and kind of defend this high ground here, which has served us well. Uh, while also trying to, to make sure we're not outflanked by um, the newly arriving Confederate forces. So we will go ahead and... Uh, this gives you a briefing. That's cool. I didn't notice that the first time. So this says... I'll let you guys read it if you want. You can pause here. Um, you know, as it says, Oak Ridge is going to receive more pressure from Ewell uh, approaching from the north, and we don't want to get outflanked by that. Um, Howard and his 11th Corps are now deployed on Cemetery Ridge. Uh, so we really can't defend Oak Ridge. We're kind of outflanked. So um, I think this is the option we're going to go with. We're going to pull back down off of Oak Hill, uh, try to, to keep Oak Ridge and Seminary Ridge, and then defend the north part of town, uh, and, and obviously keeping this high ground as well if we can. This will be the main objective, as you see, when we get into the battle. So here's the situation. Uh, we heavily outnumber the Confederates right now, um, but we've only got what that's probably going to be one brigade of reinforcements coming in. Um, here's the position, uh, pretty much as we expected. Uh, so it's about an hour after our last uh, engagement ended, an hour and a half, give or take. The Confederates only got 7,100, they only have 7,100 troops on the field, and they have. Uh, we we're almost doubling them in guns, but as you see, uh, they're expecting 43 more guns than 14,000 soldiers, so basically we're going to be heavily outnumbered by the end of this battle as well. Um, so our task is to hold Oak and Seminary Ridges, which we held last time, and repel the attackers again. Oak Ridge is the key, that makes sense, um, but it is exposed, and that's because there's no real high ground for us to defend here, so that's why we have these troops on um, Cemetery Hill. So I have a plan, uh, um, and I'll share that with you now uh, as we come into the battle. Uh, an interesting thing is it also kind of um, saves the position of your troops. Uh, you know, in this case, like, yes, it saved them, but then it just shifted everybody down, which not really ideal, not what I would have done, um, but, but kind of a neat, neat feature. So you can see they, they've taken up Oak Hill. And here was Oak Ridge, where the main battle was fought um, earlier in the morning. And then, you know, we had these guys were down south scouting, and so we'll kind of just do that with them again. The Iron Brigade, they moved, it was sitting right here, basically where Baxter is. And so everything is kind of shift down to the south, which I don't know. I wouldn't have done that, so, you know, whatever, it is what it is. Um, so basically I have to kind of move them back. Um... Buford will just move back. Uh, let's kind of take a look at our forces in general. You know, they're pretty tired. Their morale's back. They've got a little bit of rest. But not a ton. Um, Biddle, he was our guy that basically, you know, was our strategic reserve last time. Uh, I think Paul and Baxter will be enough to hold Seminary Ridge. Um, and we'll give him Cooper and um, Stevens uh, for artillery support. Bucktail will move into position. Reynolds can move up. Hall's artillery battery. And then uh, Biddle, the rested guy, will kind of be our initial covering flanking force. Uh, let's see, Caleb's battery will put him up here too, on the hill. 
um, and Stuart. Well, the Iron Brigade is also going to be a reinforcement. And then I believe I'll use Stuart as well. And at least get them moving in that direction. Now, <clears throat> the problem we had that we're going to have, I think, is that these guys are depleted, right? So I don't think there's going to be, I do not believe that there will be a strong push on uh, Seminary Ridge, uh, despite the fact that it's worth 2,500 victory points. Because if you look back here, this is, if we hold this, shoot, it doesn't even really matter if we hold this stuff or not, because this is double the points of that stuff. It's so, like if we lost both of those, they would get 3,500 points, right? Which doesn't even equal one of these two back here. Um, so this this is where we need to defend. However, because we chose to try to hold this ground, we need to cover this flank. And this general area up here to the north and northeast is where the new Confederate reinforcements are going to be arriving from, which could clearly be troublesome. But we do have now the 11th Corps um, to try to, to hold them back. So initially, I'm going to take these three batteries and move them to the northeast side of town. Uh, I'm also going to take Ames and get him moving to the north side of town, and Von Gilsa. You can kind of erase as you drag back if you make like a mistake. It starts to get a little bit crowded. Um, and the 11th Corps uh, will take the general and put him kind of on the north side of town. I believe I'm going to need these guys as well. Uh, so I'm going to take them and put them there, at least initially. Uh, and then these guys are kind of my like reserve uh, if I need them, which I probably will based on how drastically outnumbered we're going to be. I think I'm even going to take Paul and move him up here just because these guys are, are kind of beaten down already. All right, so let's start it up. 2.20 in the afternoon. Good news, sir. General Stannard has arrived sooner than expected. Where's that at? All right, down south. Okay, so we've got some more reinforcements. Let's see what old Johnny Reb's got in place. I, I wouldn't expect... Again, you can see they're, they're kind of coming in. Baxter's got good cover shuffling some troops around. Bucktail. Hall. I wouldn't expect a, a, an overly strong push from this direction. Uh, let's see, I neglected to move these batteries. Uh, let's take a strong... Uh, was that Dilger? He'll kind of be supporting Caliph because it, it does appear as if the Confederates have a large number of uh, batteries, so we'll kind of counter that as best we can. Here's a standard. This is this is the entirety of our reinforcements for today, so um, or for this afternoon, I should say. So I'll move him uh, this direction. One thing I, I, I don't know is if their movement rate is increased on roads or not. I have to, I'm not sure about that. That would be an interesting uh, piece to learn. Uh, then uh, Wheeler. Um, get him moving to the north of town as well. So basically we'll take Buford and bring him back this way. Basically just get him out of the... You know, I think I'm even going to take Smith and move him that direction as well. So basically, Buford and Krasnowski are our, our reserves. So Perrin with 1,200. Um, but Baxter's in pretty good shape. Bucktail's condition is not great, but uh, I think he can hold. Rhodes is approaching from the north, and that's what we were worried about. So Biddle, 
take him and put him up on Oak Ridge. Paul. Right there. I have to have color advanced just a little bit. get him up there before Scales takes that high ground from us. I don't think, uh, we got a lot of artillery over here, like I said, but, uh, they're not in close range, like our artillery is, and I don't think they're going to be able to dislodge troops with that, whereas our artillery can really do a number on them. Alright, so we're seeing the, the new um, forces kind of get up into position. You don't need to run anymore. Uh, let's just do that. Iron Brigade. Oops. Ames, Von Gilsa, Coster, Schlemmer Flemmering, Smith. Standard. That's fine. trying to get better with my artillery placement. I don't feel like I've been particularly competent with that. Rhodes sends the rest of his forces. We're being overwhelmed. Alright, go ahead and stop there. In good cover with Biddle. Paul uh, will move to protect uh, Biddle's flank and the flank of Oak Ridge. Uh, I don't like this inflating fire, but at the moment I'm not sure what I can do about it. Uh, I gotta wait for my um, artillery batteries to get into position. So Paul, not great cover, being engaged by Iverson. Uh, Alright, let's hustle, Iron Brigade boys. Ames, you might need to hustle a bit too. Alright, our artillery's working. That's good, that's good. standard to maybe back up this area here. Uh, 
position for Paul to be in. It's a little bit of pressure here on Baxter, but with the artillery I've got in the relatively high position and, and good cover up on these hills, not overly concerned about it. They've got high morale, they're just tired. Not the greatest cover here either, but again, not sure that there's much we can do about it. at this point. We lost it. Paul in the retreat. Standard uh, should be able to kind of fill that gap. So good job uh, Rio General Paul's uh, brigade holding there. That's what we needed from them. Von Gils is engaged. Coster Schlumfering's kind of holding down our flank, and I'm not uh, utilizing my stuff very well. Uh, Smith, in the reserve. Heckman, is he? Uh, I don't think he's engaging. Uh, so if I can move him up, and Wilkinson, same thing. Getting kind of crowded. I don't have a lot of high ground to put my artillery on. Hate to make it too easy of a target. But, again, you know, if I can hold Oak Ridge, great. If I can't, uh, if it becomes untenable, then, the, you know, then it is what it is. It, um, and we'll have to fall back. Paul fall back and, re and recuperate a little bit. Biddle could probably use a break, but we just don't have quite that many resources. And again, so you can kind of see this is, is pretty much what I expected. A heavy push on the right flank here. Um, and, and really not not a whole lot uh, of anything uh, on this left flank. It really ends up being more of an artillery duel. I don't know. I thought they were going to have more troops over here, but I'm just not really seeing them. Nervous to leave this completely open, um, but well, you know what? There's a quick solution to that, which is take these guys and do some scouting. Geez, Cloud, can 
come up with that a little earlier. Uh, so yeah, as we send those guys out on a scout, uh, I'll do a quick recap. We're 30 minutes into the video, so I'll go ahead and put in another cut. But uh, strong Confederate forces able to kind of push us back a little bit off of Oak Ridge, and they've they've taken that from us, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we're kind of refusing the right flank here, but we're we're pretty strong, and we're we're kind of then reflanking them. So we'll see if we can't maybe push them back off that hill. Uh, if not, it's not a huge loss. We're still taking. Um, you know, quite a few more victory points than, than they're going to end up with out of this one. So uh, we'll see what happens next time uh, later in the afternoon on the 1st of July. So uh, join us for part four soon. Until then, fly safe and game on.